Check, one, two, check. Man, it's been a while since I've done this. Well, hey there, what's going on? Yes, I am still here and I do still make these type of videos. And today, I have a brain on my shirt. Well, <laughs> looks like he's got something going on in his eye. Let me take this microphone off. Look, a brain. I don't know, I like the t-shirt or a sweater. I think it's cool. Thyalmighty.com, represent. <laughs> What's going on guys? So, like I said, yes, I am still here, still making these videos. I know it's been a while, but um, I got some good stuff for you. So today, I'm going to be reviewing Journeys Out of the Body by Robert A. Monroe. And I've read this book, I've read this book, which is the second book by Robert Monroe on out-of-body experiences, and this book, the third book on out-of-body experiences by Robert Monroe, aka Astral Projection, or as he calls it, the second body in the second state. So I'm going to be reviewing all three of these books, but today, because I thought that I was just going to do a video talking about all three of them, like a really generalized video, but I started going through them because I underline and star and check mark things. I'm a very active reader. And I just basically decide, I'm like, I can't do all three of these books in one video. So I got to do separate videos for each book because there's so much in all of them. And honestly, my thinking and my not, I don't know, I've just, I've gotten a lot out of these books and they've changed my mind in several ways or just opened my mind to new ways of thought. And from a skeptic like myself, who's just super skeptical of everything and including astral projection, somebody pointed me to these books and so I read them and I want to share what I learned with you all and the insights that I have found in these books uh, from somebody with my perspective, my background, you know, uh, growing up Christian, now being a skeptical agnostic slash kind of atheist. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so let's get into it. A book review on Robert A. Monroe's Journeys Out of the Body. So in this book, he is a very, all right, so first off, represent, this dude's from Virginia. Guess where I'm from? Virginia, East Coast, what up? Um, <laughs> but I really appreciate Robert Monroe. Just from reading his these three books that I've read, I really appreciate his mindset towards all of the endeavors into out-of-body experiences, astral projection, whatever you want to call it, second body, second state, which is what he calls it. I really appreciate who he is and how he goes about looking at these things because he's a guy uh, that he explains he did not grow up religious. He didn't intend to be religious or spiritual in any sense. He just had these things just start happening to them. And he is a very uh, well-known, high-up businessman in Virginia. And so the people that he hangs out with, his friends, are doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, like scientists, uh, neuroscientists. And these are people that he trusts. And so when all of these things started happening to him, he didn't just you know, jump into a, uh, jump on the spiritual train and just say, well, I guess this is what's happening to me, la da 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 da. No, he actually, like in the back of this book and in the back of his second book, Far Journeys, he has a whole psych evaluation and he invites people. He's like, do experiments to me, like figure out if I'm telling the truth or if I have some sort of disorder that I don't know about. And so just reading just knowing that and reading that within like the first chapter of his book and just hearing his explanation um, that like, you know, he's he didn't mean for this to happen, but this started happening to him and it started freaking him out. And so instead of running from it, he decided to run into it. So there's there's so much in this book. And I just want to say, if you are a skeptic about out-of-body experiences, if you are, if you're not sure, I highly, highly, highly recommend this book because I would say now just from reading this book, but also the, th the two other books that he wrote on out-of-body experiences, before all of it, I was like maybe like 10 to 20 percent agnostic about it like maybe this is a thing maybe not now i'm at like 75 and 80 percent that like this could actually be the case still skeptical from that you know 25 20 percent uh for a number of reasons that i will talk about um but 
what I, I'm going to read some parts of this book now that specifically address the Christian faith and specifically address um, whether what people experience in religion or spirituality, um, you know, if that is at all the case when traveling out of body or if it's something completely different. So, um, I, you know, I, I'm not going to get into like super specifics because there's so much in here and the language that he uses is not language like the language that he uses to describe things is not language that it's like a super spiritual person would only comprehend if you are a skeptic and very scientifically minded I mean this man is really all about observable science and he repeats that throughout all of these books he he repeats it time and time again like this can only be found this can only be done and proven through scientific evidence but the goal that he has for these books is stated uh, this is the second chapter page 44 he says perhaps the second body operating in the second state can provide the quantum jump to prove God empirically then there will be no more underground underground meaning he talks about how these people they don't have a place in the world they're the misfits right um, where they talk about things of that aren't in religion it's a more spiritual more even agnostic I don't know what this is, but I know that there's something more. So they're exploring it. And he talks about how this is the underground. There's not really a place for these people. And that was the place where he actually found the most answers and explanations for what was happening to him. So he said, you know, maybe this out-of-body experience, maybe these experiences will actually prove God empirically through scientific observation. Um, and so moving right along here... Uh, to my next note. Ah, okay. So, uh, this is in a, the, a chapter called, Because the Bible Told Me So. So, he addresses these things that are in uh, the Bible, in religion, and says, is this actually the case? Are these, you know, archetypes, is God that we know in the Bible, is it real? Does it have something to do with this out-of-body state? And he has this encounter or experience that to me, when I read a lot of the Christian mystics years ago, a lot of the things that he experiences, I'm like, this is like verbatim, like what a Christian mystic had or would experience. And so uh, he has this experience. I'll just read one part of it. Uh, page 122, it says, In the midst of normal activity, wherever it may be, there is a distant signal, almost like uh, heralytic trumpets. I can read, I promise. Everyone takes the signal calmly, and with it, everyone stops speaking or whatever he may be doing. It is the signal that he, capital H, or they, capital T, is coming through his kingdom. And then he goes through this, because he's out of body, and he hears, he's in this place that he calls locale, local two. Um, there's local one, two, and three. Again, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of these realms or dimensions that he found, but he was in this local two, is what he calls it. And he hears that he sees all these people and he hears this signal. And it's like he hears these loud trumpets coming and uh, then he's like, it's a signal that he is coming through his kingdom. And what he, I'm not gonna read the whole entire part, but what he experiences is basically, uh, there's a being that comes through this place that he was at and all he felt was love, acceptance, peace, and unity within every single person. It was like he didn't have to know everybody he was just he knew that he was accepted he could hear music he could uh see sound there was all these beautiful colors and it was while this person and he never was able to look at the person um i don't know if he i don't i can't remember if it said he wasn't able to or he just said that he he it's yeah not that he wasn't able to uh but he just didn't and i don't even think he re he recalls knowing exactly why um, but he just had this radical experience um, 
As he passes, there is a roaring musical sound and a feeling of radiant, irresistible, living force of ultimate power that peaks overhead and fades into the distance. And so even he asks on the next page, is it God? Is it God's son? Is it his representatives? Uh, and so he has this very profound experience. And on the very next page, uh, he says, Within all of this, yet not a part of it, you are aware of the source of the entire span of your existence, of you, of the vastness beyond your ability to perceive and or imagine here. You know and easily accept the existence of the Father, capital F, your true Father, the Father, the Creator of all that is or was. You are one of His countless creations. How or why, you do not know. This is not important. You are happy simply because you are in the right place where you truly belong. Now, amazing as it may be, when I read that, I was kind of baffled. I was like, wow, okay, you know. Uh, if, if what he says is legitimate, and by the way, along his legitimacy, this book is filled with, with so many stories that it was, a couple of them even took place in a laboratory. And he, in the back of the book, he shows very scientific, uh, you know, with all these numbers and statistics here, very scientific results of exactly the data that was collected during these laboratory experience experiments and these different experiences that he had now he writes down all of these crazy experiences and he does experiments on his own and tells you about him he says you know there's even a book in here that called postmortem where he sees people die and go into this second state and then in the, the next day he looks at the newspaper and sees oh, that that child actually did die that's exactly who i saw and he talks to people saying, hey, I'm going to come and visit you when I'm out of my body. And he visits these people and just to be sure, he touches them or pinches them. And well, one in particular, he pinches this person. And he goes to this person the next day saying, hey, did you recall anything weird that happened? And this person, uh, she lifts up her shirt and she has like this huge bruise exactly where he pinched her. And so there's a number of things like that to where, and he doesn't just say these things and say, aha, there it is, I've proved it, this is an out-of-body experience. No, he actually says so many stories, so many encounters and shares, you know, here's what I found, here's the data, now what can we do with this? He thinks about it very objectively and very scientifically. He actually, he even says in the books, he's like, I try to leave all emotion out of it. Like, what is the actual truth? And he says right here in chapter 13, the greatest proof of the existence of any particular phenomenon is consistency through repeated observation. So he knows he's not trying to prove anything. He realizes he's like, I, I'm a man of science, basically. Um, and so, uh, okay, here's, here's a very interesting thing. All that aside, I found this very, very interesting. I'm just going to read this, uh, uh, what is it, a paragraph. There, I can find my words. Talking about the, it's a chapter on the mind and supermind. This is on page 187. He's like, of the few facts that have been properly tagged, there are the flying and falling dreams. I am quite certain that such dreams are but memories of some degree of second state experience. I have often become aware of experiencing the flying dream during sleep only to discover that I was actually floating out in the second body as I was brought uh, consciousness to the incident. This involuntary action happens most frequently, frequently within any conscious effort. It may well be that many people do have this experience during sleep, but just don't remember it. And the thing is, as the three books goes on, he starts out with that, with basically that statement saying, it's possible that every single night people could be leaving their bodies and they just don't remember it or they they see it as a dream and in the in the third book which i'll get to but he ends it all with saying i am 100 percent sure that when people are asleep they leave their body every single night but they don't remember it but his uh thing that he talks about is like the falling dreams you know you wake up and you jolt awake and he's like 
he's convinced i'm not sure if he said any like experimentation or if he experimented with it himself um, but he's convinced that that is people falling back into their body from a second body state their their second body is falling back into their body and they're returning to their body also that you know like he said the flying dreams like he just experienced um, or said that he experienced was you know you are out of body and you are flying but you just remember it as a dream because you're not your consciousness hasn't been uh, expanded enough to be aware of that that is even happening to you so you just interpret it as a dream um, let's see and then like I said very scientifically minded uh, person here I underline this it says the most sound uh, what page is this 248 on his statistical classification chapter he says the most sound conjecture wow i can i can say words i can read i promise you i can do that the most sound conjecture 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 i'm pretty sure i'm saying that right or, or i sound like an idiot either or whatever the most sound conjecture is that all perception in the second state is achieved by means of some force in the electromagnetic spectrum by direct magnetic fields either received or induced or through some force or field yet to be identified so like i said he talks about energy radiation magnetic fields um, a number of times through the book now here's what's interesting um, is that in this book and throughout all of the books he goes back and forth so i told you of that experience that he had where he's like this is the father god i'm in heaven uh you know that i saw god whatever he goes back and forth because then he has experiences showing him the exact opposite and here uh from this chapter what's this chapter called inconclusive um at the end of this chapter he says by this time it was getting light this is at the very end of uh, one of the experiences that he talks about by this time it was getting light and i sat down and cried great deep sobs as i have ever cried before because then i knew without any quali uh, qualification i can read i promise you without any qualification or future hope of change that the god of my childhood of the churches of religion throughout the world was not as we worshipped him to be that for the rest of my life i would suffer the loss of this illusion and he keeps on going back and forth uh, throughout this these books throughout this uh series and he you know it, he comes to a point where he's like I, I think god exists and then he comes to that point many many other times uh saying that you know this uh, like he wakes up in tears saying i don't think god is real um and so again that's here's just more scientific uh evidence or just talking about what this could do it's he says in chapter 21 if validity does exist here it is possible that modern technology through serious organized investment Investigation, my God, dude. Organized investigation and research into the second body postulate could provide mankind with a quantum jump as great or greater than the Copernican revolution. It would be the crack that becomes a door that becomes a gateway that opens into a new era in man's history. So I guess, you know, there's his, there's his goal. There's his end game, right? So in this I found very interesting this was in the very last chapter of his book right before he gives his whole psych evaluation or the the psychiatrist that did his evaluation writes a report in the back of his book um he says willful use of second body then potentially yields power so great that other means are helpless against it people wielding this power might well be able to suppress or divert any serious expanded study into this knowledge if history is an indication something has already retarded growth in this direction first it was a wall of ignorance next came a veil of superstition today a double barrier exists the superstition of organized religion and the derision dude i need to go back to school and the derision of recognized science 
So he, he's like, the reason we're not figuring this out is because dogmatic beliefs in religion and also because science says, well, this doesn't exist. Um, but clearly in his book, he's experiencing these things. And even in the back of the book, his, the uh, psychiatrist, the evaluation um, shows, you know, there is something going on here. They can see in the EEGs and um, like uh, the, the brain waves, the brain waves activity, even like the temperature of his body, all of this. Like his mind is normal. His mind checks out. But the things that are happening to his body when he goes out of body are very abnormal, uh, to say the least. So that's that's my review. That's Those are my takeaways from the first book. I know I mentioned a little bit about the second and third book, but I'm going to do separate videos talking uh, more in depth about those books specifically. But like I said, this is a great read. Um, you know, go grab it if you're really skeptical about it. Uh, figure it out for yourself. One of the things that he mentions time and time again in his book, and this is what I appreciate about appreciate about him too. Well, another thing that I appreciate appreciate about him is that he says, if you don't believe me, experience it for yourself. Go and do it yourself. And he even has two chapters talking about the separation process and how you can achieve out-of-body experiences yourself. He makes it super confusing. Just look up YouTube videos on how to do it. Um, I've attempted it. I have had some experiences that are very interesting that I haven't shared with you all yet. Um, but, you know, along, like, could that have been? It's just, it's more difficult for me because I have a chronic disease that my body is, my sleep is difficult, <laughs> to say the least. And so um, it's not, so it just means I have to work twice as hard as anybody else. Um, but like he says, he, he says, you know, um, if, you, if you're skeptical about it, do it yourself because it won't, at the end of it, it won't be a belief, it won't be faith, it won't be any of that, whatever. He said, you will know without a shadow of a doubt that you live on after you die. Um, even in the uh, psychiatric uh, evaluation, the psychiatrist says his tolerance for death and fear of death is extremely low. Um, so, yeah, there's much more I can say about it, but I'll just wrap it up there and I'll save it for the other two videos for the other two books. So, that is my review on Robert Monroe's Journeys Out of the Body. Um, if you like this video, love to know your thoughts on it. Comment below. Are you skeptical? Are you, you know, along the lines of this totally exists? Are you completely atheistic about it? More agnostic about it? Where do you sit? Let me know down in the comments. Would love to hear your thoughts. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. By the way, the Philosophical Misfit podcast is out now. Check it out. iTunes, Spotify, your preferred streaming platform. Love to know your thoughts on that as well. So hit me up on Instagram, nate.alger. Love to talk with you. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you misfits in the next one. Peace. I got that summer